In this video, we're going to discuss a slightly different type of proof that you may see show up, and it's another classic place to start with proofs. Divisibility or sets are probably the most common places I've seen for people to start doing proofs. In this case, we're going to prove that a set identity is true. Before we've done this with like Venn diagrams, which is all well and good, but a Venn diagram ain't a proof, right? It's a picture. A picture is definitely not a proof. It's not this formal statement of a bunch of logical things that follow from each other. So we want to formalize that idea. The common way that you show that a set is equal to another set is by showing that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. So we want to show that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. And we want to show the opposite as well, that the right-hand side is a subset of the left-hand side. If two sets are subsets of each other, the only way that can be true is that they are the exact same set. So we're going to try to prove that. When you have a proof that you need to prove two different ways, this happens commonly with these set types of proofs or with proofs that are if and only if. That's an implication both directions. So you need to do two different type, uh, blah, blah, blah. An if and only if is two different implications. So you have two different proofs to do. Similarly, we're going to do two different things are subsets. So let's see what, how we do this. We're going to show the one I did in green first. The way that we do this is we're going to let X be an element of the left-hand set and then say, what does that tell us until eventually we can then claim that that X is in the right-hand set. Remember that a subset means that if it's in the first set, it must also be in the second set. So to show that, we're going to be begin by supposing we're in that first set. So let X be it in A union, B intersect C. And then I usually refer, refer to this as unwinding the definitions. I just start with the outermost thing in parentheses and say, what does that tell me? If it's in a union, that means it's either in A or in the B intersect C. So either X is in A or X is in B intersect C. Sometimes in proofs, you get to this point where there's two things that are possible and you don't know which one of them is true. To deal with this, we do what some people might call division into cases and you just say, in the first case, I'm gonna see what happens. So I'm gonna call this case one and this is when X is in A For case one, I want to say, suppose that X is an A, and we're going to chase that down and see what that tells me. I want to now be able to claim that it is in the right-hand side. So if I know X is an A, since X is in A, X must be in A union B by the definition of union, and X must be in A union C, again, by the definition of union. In order to be in a union, it must be in one of the sets. We already know it's an A, so it's definitely in one of those sets. So we maybe even cite by definition of union. By definition of union. If it's in A union B and it's in A union C, it must be in the intersection of those two sets. Further, X is in... A union B intersect A union C by definition of intersection. And maybe you want to abbreviate these things. So here I just said the symbol. That's also a completely valid way to do this. Now we're done with that because we, if it was in A, it was in both of those unions. Therefore, it was in the intersection. So in that case, we're done. So let's talk about the other case. Case two. And that would be X is in B intersect C. In that case, we know that if it's in the intersection, X must be in B and X must be in C, again, just by definition. 
right, by def to save myself some time. If it's in B and it's in C, I now know that it would be in A union B because it's in B. So since X in B, X is in A union B, and since X is in C, it must be in A union C. Thus, X is in the intersection of those two sets because it's in both of them. So it's in A union B. Intersect A union C. So what we've done is we said there was two options. Either it was in A or it was in B intersect C. In either case, X was in A union B intersect A union C. Therefore... Because we covered all possible options, it was in that set, and regardless of what we did, we know that X is in that set. A union B intersect A union C. And because of that, we now know that the left-hand side is a subset of the right-hand side. We now know that A union B intersect C is a subset of A union C. B intersect A union C. So that's how you do the left-hand side as a subset of the right-hand side. I'm going to leave it to you to try to do the other side. It should be a very, very similar argument. You're just going to unwind the things in a different way. But you'll need to do something very similar to show the other case. Hopefully you can manage that. It's going to be very, very similar. Effectively like what we did here, but kind of in reverse.